Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are today. Uh, the Northwest Regional Telehealth Resource Center and the Telehealth of Alli Alliance of Oregon is welcoming you today to the conference. We're gonna get started here at the top of the hour. Um, just thought we'd give you a little bit of audio to test, maybe give you a chance to adjust your mic, your audio before we get started. A couple of uh, housekeeping items here to take care of. And we're asking, uh, all of your microphones are muted, so you really don't have any problems with that today. We asked you to use the question and answer feature to ask your questions of the moderator and the uh, presenters. Um, we will uh, have the moderator uh, towards the end of the session uh, read back a lot of your questions and try to get some good candid responses from our presenters. Um, uh, slides are post posted at nrtrc.org under sessions, and we will be posting recordings of these sessions as well after we get them processed. Um, so we're just about ready to get started. Uh, today's presentation, uh, it's a, a one hour presentation. Uh, Doris Barda and uh, Jordan Berg are from the National uh, Telehealth Resource Assessment Center. Some of us know it as TTAC. Um, they're a great tool to be used as part of the uh, National uh, Telehealth Resource Center programs. Um, Doris, I think we're all set to go. Uh, take it away. Thank you, Brian. Jordan and I are pleased to be able to provide for you a virtual telehealth showcase. Now, generally, we do this in person, but today we're going to do it for you virtually. So who is TTAC? TTAC is federally funded to the Office for the Advancement of Telehealth. That's a HRSA-funded organization. TTAC provides technical assessment primarily to the 12 regional telehealth resource center and the other national TRC. Now this picture shows Garrett Spargo, who is our PI of our grant, looking into the eyes of Jordan, who is our technology specialist. And between the three of us, we have over 50 years experience in telehealth. So as I shared a little earlier, the telehealth resource centers have 12 regional TRCs and two national. Between the regional TRCs, we're able to serve the whole United States. And with the two national TRCs, TTAC is the technology TRC, and the Center for Connected Health Policy is the policy TRC. And between all of us, we serve the whole United States in providing technical assessments for telemedicine. So what are the telehealth showcases? Usually we provide these in person at regional conferences. We bring our equipment with us and it allows the attendees to experience and compare the medical peripheral side by side. Jordan and I, TTAC is vendor neutral. So we're not trying to sell anything to anyone. And it gives you an opportunity to look at the technology and make assessments for yourself and your organization. So the overview for today's presentation is we will focus on technology in relation to the COVID-19 crisis and how that has influenced trends and platform uses for providing telemedicine care. We will provide a live demonstration on video and audio solutions. We will discuss features on three exam cameras and will provide video demonstration clips we will talk about how electronic stethoscopes are used in virtual care. We will demonstrate how mobile health or M health peripherals are changing how telemedicine is provided, especially in directed consumer telemedicine. And finally, augmented reality. In the live showcase, this is one of our favorite tools to show people. Obviously, we can't let you try it today, but we will show you a video of an actual user experiencing the technology for the first time. We will leave you with some thoughts about technology and telemedicine before you taking your questions. <clears throat> now, COVID-19 has disrupted some of the common trends in the telehealth platform market. Organizations want to get a telemedicine functionality set up as quick as possible, and there is an increase in interest in reaching patients in their homes. For video-based telehealth, there are some key features that should be considered during your selection process, and there are some key concerns that need to be addressed or at least understood. So for key features, COVID-19 has moved many programs towards web-based video platforms because they can be set up quickly. 
Additionally, the need to speak with patients in their home has reinforced the move to direct to patient telemedicine using patient's equipment, which is commonly a mobile phone or a tablet, consumer Wi-Fi, and cellular connectivity. So what are some of the key concerns? COVID-19 is stress testing the telemedicine capability of organizations, service providers, and vendors. It has made us focus on several key features that are necessary for any rapidly deployed service. Deployability. How quickly can a new service or expanded service be deployed into a clinical environment? If you purchase a new platform or device, how soon will you be able to use it with patients? Scalability. How rapidly can you move from seeing a dozen patients a week via telemedicine to hundreds of patients a week? Does your network support the spike in traffic? Do you have enough software licenses to cover the spike in demand? Reliability. If you get a new service or device, how reliable will it be for actual patient care over time? Security and privacy. There are two forces that are affecting security and privacy during the COVID-19 crisis. One is relaxation of HIPAA compliance and other regulations addressing telemedicine care. This has allowed clinicians and patients to connect over a variety of non-traditional video platforms like Skype and Facebook. This is sure to be a temporary measure, and once the pandemic is over, programs will need to adjust their care models back to a more secure environment. We are also seeing concerns raised over high volume video service providers regarding security and privacy. Some of these issues are related to users not understanding the security tools built into the products they are using. Other issues are centered around the way data is being managed. Regardless, we are seeing growing pains as organizations, vendors, and consumers deal with this new way of seeking and delivering care. Ease of use. There are so many more providers and patients using these technologies, some who have never even considered using telemedicine previously. Having products that are simple to use and easy to understand is vital in the delivery of patient care. Now, the first technologies we want to share with you are video conferencing. <clears throat> video conferencing is by far the most common way telemedicine care is delivered, whether directly to the patient in their home or in a clinic using live video. Video conferencing is a useful tool in the delivery of virtual healthcare. Over the last five years, changes in video conferencing include movement towards cloud-based video platforms. Providers have begun using low-cost laptops or desktops for video usage. And medical peripherals used during telemedicine visits have moved to USB plug-and-play cameras and audio solutions. For our demonstration today, we will show what web-based video conferencing endpoints look like to the end user. So our eyes and ears are the greatest tool we have for assessing video and audio quality. We will give you a quick demonstration of three different integrated audio and video solutions so that you can see and hear some of the features for yourself. We will show you what web-based video conferencing looks like to the end user. Pay particular attention to the field of view, the color accuracy, and the overall clarity of the audio and video. I will briefly introduce the platforms and Jordan will demonstrate the technology. So the first system we will demonstrate for you is a Logitech Meetup. This is an all-in-one USB plug and play video and audio solution. It has built in pan tilt zoom video speakers and a microphone. It also supports an extension microphone puck that can be used to capture audio from the center of the room. Jordan will now demonstrate the Logitech Meetup. Thanks, Doris. So um, to kind of preface, I'm here in my living room, um, as many of us are, and it's kind of a big room. So if we hear a little bit of reverb from the room, that's kind of what you're hearing. So it's a little, probably a little bit more echoey in here than um, what you would actually get in a carpeted uh, clinical environment or a, a smaller environment. So the first demonstration we have for you are the video and audio capabilities of the Logitech Meetup. Um, as you can see, we can zoom out here using the built-in digital zoom features of this device. 
and it'll follow me, or I can uh, have it using the remote follow me kind of across the room with the pan functionality. It has built-in audio and a microphone puck that can be deployed to the center of the room, uh, making it a good solution for either medium-sized conference rooms or uh, larger-sized clinic rooms. Back to you, Doris. Thanks, Jordan. Now, the next system that we would like to share with you is a Poly Studio. The Poly Studio uses a large sensor to capture a wide field of view so that users can pan within the digital image. Like the Logitech Meetup, it has built in microphones and speakers and is able to support extension microphones. Jordan will now demonstrate it for you. Okay, next up we have the Poly Studio. Um, like Doris said, this camera uses a large 4K sensor to um, provide a, a big field of view. Um, the image that you're actually seeing is much smaller than that, so what that allows us to do is actually um, pan um, and zoom within the larger image. So you can see as I zoom in here on my face and pan up to kind of capture a more, a better framed image. Um, and then I can pan like we do with the meetup across the room. It also has built-in audio and microphone capabilities and the ability to track different as they move across the room. So as you see, it kind of framed my, um, uh, my, my torso here uh, based on what it's picking up from the microphones. And as I move over here, it should, as I continue to talk, it should reframe the picture based on where I'm at in the room. We're seeing this type of technology being used more and more in the different video platforms. It takes a second for these uh, tracking technologies to kind of pick up and uh, listen to where people are, but in a more static environment where people aren't moving all over the place, um, it's a fairly seamless experience and it transitions pretty quickly. The, this sort of, uh, sort of solution would be useful for a, a larger, um, medium to large size conference room or a, a large clinic space. Back, back to you, Doris. Thanks, Jordan. The last video and audio solution that we will demonstrate you is the Meeting Owl. The key features of this system include a 360 view and a robust audio. This device is designed to sit on a table in the middle of a group of speakers so that the camera can automatically focus on the individual speaking. So now Jordan will demonstrate the Meeting Owl. Okay, we're just switching over to the Meeting Owl camera. It should be popping up here momentarily. So the first thing that we notice when we pull up the Meeting Owl is the large 360 degree preview here at the top. And you can see this is a single lens camera. Um, there's no stitching that's happening. It's actually just using a lens to kind of pull together a, a fisheye view of everything going on in the room. Take that larger image and slices it based on where it's hearing volume coming from the room. So like the poly, if I move across the room, it'll take it just a second, but it should split the view and focus in on my face over here, right? And so I should be able to move across the room over here and do this as well. So it has integrated microphones and audio um, so that this is kind of an all-in-one plug-and-play USB. This is designed for small groups of people in a huddle space where people can gather around the camera. Um, you can see a centralized view of multiple different participants. Back to you, Doris. Thanks, Jordan. So what we'd like to do now is just show you a comparison of the three cameras that Jordan just demonstrated for you. These are pictures that we took of the meetup, the studio, and the owl. So it gives you a little bit of a, of a view of what these three cameras can do. So now the next set of peripherals we will demonstrate are the exam cameras. The exam camera is one of the most commonly used devices to support telemedicine care. USB exam cameras provide a way for the remote provider to get a closer view of their patients. These cameras are designed to function like a webcam. So using an exam cam can be as simple as switching the camera setting on your video software. Many cameras will have interchangeable lenses for clinical applications, such as otoscope and dermatology imaging. Some cameras have built-in storage, so images can be captured for later review or transmission. Others only stream, but may have the ability to pause a view on the screen. There are numerous devices on the market, 
and they range anywhere from a couple of hundred dollars to over a thousand dollars. Jordan will now demonstrate the layout and features of these three devices, and you will also see a recording demonstrating their functionality. Thank you, Doris. So first up on the table here, we have the DE605 made by Firefly. So this device it has a manual focus wheel. It's adjustable with this thumb wheel up here. It has a built-in polarization filter that we activate by just rotating this housing up above the manual focus wheel. Additionally, there's a button here for capturing live images, but that needs to be done through the Firefly Pro software that's included with the camera and can't be done really easily during a live camera stream. There's also a light button here that uh, toggles through the four steps of light um, powered by the onboard LED. Um, next, we're gonna have a brief demo video showing the capabilities of this camera. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Firefly DE605 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 36 inches or three feet from the camera lens. Note how the manual focus needs to be adjusted for objects to be seen clearly. Images taken from this distance are useful for visualizing the anatomic location of complaints and for assessing movement. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Firefly DE605 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 12 to 18 inches from the camera lens. These sorts of views are useful for dermatology, neurological, and general exam purpose imaging. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Firefly DE605 to capture images of test objects at a distance of three to four inches from the camera lens. This view is useful for viewing details like eyes, rashes or lesions, interoral imaging, dermatology, neurological, and general exam. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Firefly DE605 to capture skin detail. Using the manual focus ring, we can adjust the image until the desired skin features are clear. As we turn the polarization ring, we can see as the shine and depth is removed from the image for better color detail. Turning the filter back returns the shine and depth of the original image. And we should mention that um, in our in these demonstration videos, the, the number of frames in the video is kind of being reduced. So you're seeing a little bit more stutter than you would actually see if we were, we were showing this to you live. But um, you know, we're, we're trying to send this over the internet, so we have to kind of make some concessions there. But um, that was the example of the DE605. Next, we're going to look at the Horus 3. So the Horus 3 is a USB exam camera that has an interchangeable otoscope and exam lens. Well, here we see the exam lens. And then this is the otoscope lens. On the back side of the device, we have a manual focus wheel, 
that we can adjust with a finger underneath the grip to lock in the desired focus. It has a built-in LED light source that's variable based on which lens that we have attached. Um, a key feature of this device, or kind of a unique feature, is the built-in touch screen. So this does a couple of different things. First, it provides a guiding view for you when you're framing your images. So you see a live view of what the, the lens is actually seeing as we look through it. It can also be used to review images that are captured and stored onto the device. Um, and finally, it lets you um, navigate the different menus to adjust settings on the device. The device is powered um, via USB through a locking cable here at the bottom. Um, and this also allows it to stream out the video signal and you can actually plug it into a computer to download either uh, video files or still images that you've captured and stored on the device. Next, we've got a short video showing the demonstration of the functions of this device. In this demonstration, we'll show the ability of the Horus 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 36 inches or three feet from the camera lens. Note how the manual focus needs to be adjusted to focus on the test objects. Images taken from this distance are useful for visualizing anatomic locations of complaints and for assessing movement. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Horus 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 12 to 18 inches from the camera lens. This view is useful for dermatology, neurological, and general exam purpose imaging. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Horus 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about three to four inches. This view is useful for viewing details like eyes, rashes or lesions, interoral images, and dermatology, neurological, and general exam purposes. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Horus 3 to capture skin detail. Holding the camera about 4 inches away, we manually focus to acquire the desired skin features. At this point, we can take a still image that will pause the live feed and store an image to the device for closer observation. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Horus 3 to capture imagery of the tympanic membrane. After switching to the otoscope lens, we move the scope into the ear canal where we can see the tympanic membrane. Using the manual focus wheel, we can ensure that all structures are in focus. We can now take a still image to pause the live feed and store an image to the device for closer observation.
Next on the bench, we have the total exam three. So this USB exam camera, like the um, Horus 3, has interchangeable general exam and otoscope lenses. Images can be focused using um, the autofocus, and uh, we can actually use a manual white balance to make sure that we're getting good color accuracy for this device. The head of this exam camera can pivot down to provide a more natural angle for capturing otoscope images. On the device handle itself, we have a freeze frame button that allows us to pause and resume the live stream of video. And we also have an LED button that lets us step through the different brightness of light, depending on which lens that we have attached. Pricing for this unit is about $7,500 for both lenses. And I would say this camera is designed primarily for live streaming exam images in that it doesn't have the ability to store images directly to the device. There's no ability to save video or um, uh, image files directly onto the device. We're gonna show you a quick video of the capabilities of the uh, Total Exam 3. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Total Exam 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 36 inches or 3 feet from the camera lens. Note how the camera is able to automatically focus on the different objects. Images taken from this distance are useful for visualizing anatomic locations of complaints and for assessing movement. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Total Exam 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of about 12 to 18 inches from the camera lens. These sorts of views are useful for dermatology, neurological, and general exam imaging. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Total Exam 3 to capture images of test objects at a distance of 3 to 4 inches from the camera lens. This view can be useful for viewing details like eyes, rashes or lesions, interoral images, dermatology, neurology, and general purposes. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Total Exam 3 to capture skin detail. First, we balance the camera on a piece of white paper to ensure color accuracy. Holding the camera about 4 inches away allows the autofocus to acquire the desired skin features. At this point, the freeze frame function for this device is useful in pausing the image for closer observation. In this demonstration, we will show the ability of the Total Exam 3 to capture imagery of the tympanic membrane. After switching to the otoscope lens, we are able to white balance the image on a piece of paper. Moving the scope into the ear canal, we can see the tympanic membrane. We can use the freeze frame function to pause the image for closer observation.
Those are pretty cool, huh? You know, um, we actually were able to give you a better demonstration of those three cameras through the small videos that Jordan did for you than we are live. So um, the cameras are my favorite tools to play with. Now the next telemedicine tools we will demonstrate are the stethoscopes. Live stethoscopy can be used to listen to a patient's heart and lung sounds at a distance. Many stethoscopes require software to transmit their sounds to the remote provider. Most stethoscopes will connect through a PC computer using USB, Bluetooth, or microphone jack connectors. Many stethoscopes can be supported by software from multiple developers, so it is definitely worthwhile for you to take a look at different software solutions before you make your selection. We have seen a rise in stethoscopes that, can, that connect directly to mobile devices, turning those devices into mobile stethoscope platforms. There has also been a trend towards having a single lead ECG embedded in the stethoscope chest piece. So now Jordan will do a quick overview of three stethoscopes that are on the market. Thanks, Doris. So first up, we've got the Lippmann 3200. So this stethoscope connects via Bluetooth, so it's wireless, um, and is uh, supported on a number of different telemedicine platforms. Some of the features on this device are onboard volume controls, onboard filtering, and the ability to record directly to the device. It's powered by a single AA battery and uses the traditional style stethoscope earpieces. Next up, we have the GEDMED OmniSteth. Like the Lippmann 3200, this device features onboard volume controls and filtering. I mean, it has the ability to record um, uh, strips directly to the device. It has interchangeable pediatric and adult heads, so you can actually swap those out depending on your patient, and supports the traditional stethoscope earpieces, or using the, the coupler here, we can actually plug in a set of traditional headphones. And if we're going to use this as a telemedicine, if we're going to stream these sounds over the internet, we would actually need to use that headphone jack and plug into a line-in microphone um, headphone jack um, in order to be able to capture those sounds and send those across. The final stethoscope we want to show you today is the Echo Duo. This stethoscope is designed to be used with a mobile device, like an Android or an Apple uh, phone. The built-in Echo app gives us a lot of functionality for this device. But on the device itself, we can adjust the volume and we can change the filter by quick tapping the center button here. Recording and streaming is supported through the app. The supplied traditional style stethoscope earpiece can be removed and you can use headphones with this device as well. If we flip it over on the underside, we can see the um, ECG pads for the single lead ECG. This device is, has a built-in rechargeable battery and charges using a wireless charging station. Back to you, Doris. Thanks, Jordan. So the next equipment we'd like to share with you is mHealth devices. There has been a rapid increase in both the quality and quantity of mobile health or mHealth devices in the telemedicine market. These devices can support a variety of workflows, but most will, will share some common features. Generally, they will connect to a smart device like a phone or a tablet. They will be accessible through an app on those devices. They may or may not support peripher peripheral medical devices. The medical information collected by these devices is either stored in the centralized server or on the cloud. In the following overview demonstration, Jordan will show three examples of mHealth technology. Thanks, Doris. First up on the table, we have the Dermlight Dermatoscope. This device can serve as a standalone dermatoscope. You can actually see we have a focus wheel on the outside here where we're able to focus in the image. It has a variable light source, so we can change the brightness of the light. Um, a built-in polarization filter and a, a skin pigment uh, um, adjustment. And what makes this an mHealth device is we can remove the eyepiece here and attach it to a, a special, um, in this case, iPhone case, 
um, and we can use this to capture images directly into the derm light application on the device. Images that are captured this way can be sent to providers for additional review. Next up, we have the Tito Care. This is new for TTAC, and we've just uh, as we've just purchased it. Um, this is a handheld multi-purpose examination device. It's designed to be used by the patient in their home. Let me frame that just a little better for you guys. The interchangeable heads and built-in sensors allow this device to capture a variety of clinical sounds, including uh, stethoscope sounds using the steth uh, piece here. We can show how that attaches. Otoscope imaging. Exam cam imaging, interoral imaging, steph, temperature, heart, and, uh, and heart rate. The built in screen on the device and the connected iPhone Android apps are designed to guide the patient through how to perform the exams. Patients can buy one of these devices in a retail store for about $300, and then they would pay for each virtual exam they have through the service. Finally, in our M Health section here, we have the Butterfly IQ. This is a portable ultrasound device that connects via lightning connector through to an Apple tablet or phone. These devices can capture very, a variety of ultrasound data using modes adjusted through the app. The app can either record these exams or can capture stills from these exams. Once recorded, this uh, information can be sent to another provider for re review. We've recorded a quick demonstration of what this looks like, um, and we'll play that for you now. This is a demonstration of the Butterfly Mobile ultrasound. The ultrasound footage was recorded from inside the Butterfly app on an iPad. Using the vascular access preset and the color Doppler setting, we are able to visualize arteries and veins within a subject's forearms. This demonstration shows that mobile tablets are becoming robust telemedicine platforms able to support a variety of peripherals and workflows. You're muted, Jordan. Jordan, you're muted. I can't hear you. Sorry. OK, here we go. Um, so this is our augmented reality headset. This is one of our favorite things to demonstrate in our live showcases. Um, the ability for people to see digital information overlaid over the real world. As you can see, the lenses are clear. Um, and what it is, is, is a, uh, like a heads up display that appears and has digital information, 3D objects, different information that I can see through these lenses. This varies a little bit from um, virtual reality in that instead of having a completely simulated environment around me, I'm able to see my real world um, interact with physical objects that are around me, um, but still see that digital information. Over the last three years, we've really seen this technology become more practical in terms of headsets um, and the different applications that are designed for it. Um, and we really are looking forward to seeing this implemented into telemedicine in really practical and useful ways. Potential applications for this technology are in radiology, surgery, emergency medicine, training, and patient and provider education. We haven't seen a whole lot of feasible um, program usage of this device. But we do look to this as one of the technologies to watch kind of for the future of telemedicine. We're going to show you a quick demonstration of what a uh, user's first time experience with a HoloLens is like. This is a demonstration of a HoloLens user's recent experience at a TTAC technology demonstration. In this recording, the user is able to visualize a 3D mannequin 
overlaid with anatomical information. The user can walk around, lean into, and otherwise interact with this object. Augmented reality allows digital information to be inserted into the real world and is one of the technologies to watch for the future of telemedicine. Pretty cool, huh? You can see why it's one of our favorite pieces of technology to demonstrate and have people play with at our live uh, telehealth showcases. So some final thoughts. TTAC would like to leave you with some final thoughts, both from the general telehealth process and a new era brought onto us by the COVID-19 pandemic. Technology chosen should support the needs and workflow of the organization and must be supported by the users. Technology for the sake of technology ends up in drawers covered in dust. Spending hands-on time with a piece of technology is vital before you make any purchasing decisions. Try before you buy can be the difference between a successful and a failed program. Finally, get your whole team on board with the chosen technology. Your clinical staff, administration, and IT departments will have different views on what makes a good telemedicine system. Collecting that input and making sure details are documented and communi communicated is vital in the development of a successful telehealth program. And our final, final thoughts centered around the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 requires a flexible but robust response. Telemedicine is a great tool for reaching our patients remotely or in working with patients affected by the virus. This means we must be seeing patients in their homes, on their mobile devices, using their consumer-grade internet and mobile connections. It is important to be flexible, test connectivity when we can, and have backup options for when things don't work. Reassuring patients and providers that this flexibility is part of the plan can help mitigate frustration. As we expand delivery of care using telemedicine, we are also expanding our risk. Unfortunately, this COVID-19 crisis has highlighted the challenges in getting new technologies to new users and new patients. It can be challenging to determine how potential partners are defining and managing risk on their end. It is important that even in a crisis, we make efforts to effectively train and educate users on the technology we use, the controls we have in place, and the importance of their role in security and privacy. It is also important to work with our technology partners to make sure we have understanding and insight into risks. Security and privacy is not a checkbox, it is a daily discipline. We are living in a moment of time for just-in-time solutions, but it is also important that as we select technologies and plan our care models, we are thinking about how these, these solutions will work for us a year from now and five years from now. As providers, patients, and health systems rely on telemedicine to solve current problems, we can expect them to rely on telemedicine in the future. What we build today is what we will be using tomorrow. And on Friday, TTAC will be participating in a session about technology in the COVID-19 epidemic. A key topic will be the effect of COVID on infrastructure and bandwidth. This crisis has highlighted the need for reliable connectivity into the most rural locations and the importance of being able to connect with patients in their homes. Healthcare is only one example of the important role that digital connectivity plays in our lives. Being able to connect where and when needed is key in taking care of patients in this crisis and into the future. So Jordan and I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to provide you with this virtual telehealth showcase. Our contact information is below. Please feel free to contact us on anything regarding telehealth. 
If we can answer it, we will reach out to our colleagues in the other regional and national TRCs to help us. And now we'd like to open it up for a question and answers. Okay, so I see a question that's in the chat. Um, are, are there video cameras mentioned today all using digital zoom and pan tilt? So all the cameras today are using digital zoom. Um, the Logitech um, meetup is using a manual PTZ or not P, pan and tilt functionality. So it actually has a little motorized pan tilt uh, lens in there, but it is using digital zoom to do to do the zooming. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Doris, I don't see a bunch of other questions, but I do have a question for you. I'll just go ahead and bring up um, that has come up is um, uh, if uh, people have questions about the specific technology, maybe they found something, can they, they can definitely go to your site and see if you've already reviewed the technology, correct? That's a really good question, uh, Brian. We have, um, a number of toolkits on our website that has information about the technologies that we reviewed with you today. We are constantly updating our toolkits. Um, a couple of the uh, video camera, the video audio and, and video solutions are new to us. Um, we just got them. So we will do an assessment on them and we will get them up on our website. So either toolkits or something that's brand new, we usually do an innovation watch. Uh, but all of that will be posted on our website. And with regards to the slides, the slides will be posted on the NRTRC conference website. Uh, we haven't gotten them out to Deb yet, but we will get them out later today. And she will have them posted on our website during the conference. Doris, there's another question uh, It came up is, what are the key uh, questions we should ask vendors when looking at various options? And I'll, I'll take this one. Good uh, questions. So yeah, this is, this, is, this is kind of key right now. I'm gonna give you one that's um, really short term or, or more concerning in the short term is, what are the availabilities of the devices? Um, so if you're looking at peripheral devices, it's um, the, supply chains have been very disrupted by COVID-19. So the ability to actually get these devices into your hands, into clinic spaces, um, into care um, is a bit of a challenge. So um, asking what a uh, vendor supply chain looks like, how quickly they can do things, how quickly they can restock things if they sell out of things um, it is a key question that I would ask. Um, I think when we're talking about video platforms, getting a better understanding of what the controls and um, uh, documentation an organization has around their privacy policies um, and what information they're keeping, what information they're selling, um, that is really key right now. So doing a deep dive on um, what the privacy um, for, particularly for video platforms or telemedicine platforms, anyone that you're storing potentially sensitive data with. Um, uh, finally, I, I think one of the things that we really emphasize with people is that you will learn more about a piece of technology from uh, just a few minutes of handling it and putting it into your um, clinicians and uh, providers' hands than you will from a variety of demos and things like that. So most vendors are pretty um, understanding and, and flexible about sending out loaner units, giving you demo software, things like that. So really push on getting technology into your hands before you commit to buying it and deploying it. Um, that's, those, are, those are all kind of what I would consider key as you approach vendors. Another question came up is, where can we review home-based telehealth technologies? So I'll start in Jordan, you can finish. We are currently in the process of doing a thorough uh, review of all of the direct-to-patient direct technologies that are out there. Uh, we will probably have that done within the next six weeks and we will have that up on our website. So that's one part of it. And then Jordan, I'll let you answer the rest. 
Yeah, and I would also take a look at our uh, clinician's guide to video platforms. Um, we have just recently put that up and it really walks you through the process of how to kind of go through, assess from a clinical, administrative, and kind of technical point of view, which platforms are gonna really work and meet your needs. Um, the, the, that, that was written with more of a, um, a clinic to clinic viewpoint because that had been the traditional model because that was the model that was being reimbursed. But um, the clinic to patient, um, you know, some of the things that need to be considered are, uh, is the patient gonna have to download something um, if, they're, if we're connecting to them over video? Um, that can be a major hurdle for a patient to kind of get through if they have to install an application on their device. Um, and then uh, is there some way to test with the patient prior to really um, interacting with them? Do you know that their Wi-Fi or their cellular connection is gonna support a video call? Um, and just kind of um, making sure that patients are comfortable with the idea that, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna be reaching out to them in their home, we're gonna use the technology that they have um, and kind of what to expect from these visits. But, um, yeah. Doris, can you bring up your slide? Give you a, a kind of catch this up. Pull up your contact information slide again for us, please. You bet. Um, I so really there you have it. Reach out. Yeah, we, we see it now. I really encourage people that are, have attended this or watching the recording to reach out to the TTAC. It's an excellent resource. Uh, we've used it ourselves um, to be able to get and just run questions about different technology. Um, I guess the other question I have for you, um, both of you, is if we see technology that we found works well, um, do you like to hear about recommendations or hear about what our real world experience is with that tool? Yes, absolutely. So um, the, the market has really expanded really, really quickly. So there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of devices that even we are not aware of. Um, we are able to kind of, um, kind of help manage what we see on the market. Um, but if you see technologies that are working really well for your organization, we would love to hear about it. Contact us through our website. Um, and we would be happy to, to take a closer look at those uh, technologies um, either with you or as a part of a, maybe an innovation launch or something that we do that we can share with other people. Yes, you know, Brian, annually we sit down and we talk about what equipment we want to buy for that year and assess that equipment for that year. And a lot of that is decisions are made based on what we have heard from our colleagues. And so if you find something that you think is really cool and you'd like for us to take a look at it, by all means, give us a call so that we can add that to our list of technologies that we may purchase. And then generally, if we purchase it, it ends up in our tech showcase so other people can get an opportunity to look at it and feel and, and, and use it too. So by all means, we're always looking for input on what are the newest and greatest things that people want to take a look at within the telehealth technology field. And this also gives us a good chance to plug our survey. So every two years we do a technology survey and where we look at the different types of telemedicine technologies being used by healthcare organizations across the nation. Um, so we send this out. Um, it's, a, it's a survey monkey. Um, it's a, a really short survey talking about what technologies you're using, um, what technologies you'd like to use in the future, um, what are your challenges, what are things that are working for you. So if you're interested in being part of that survey, we try to cast as wide of a net as we can, but um, we don't catch everyone. If you contact us through our website, through our um, uh, uh, web um, web form there, um, we can absolutely include you on the list when we send out the links for the survey. And that'll be coming out later this year. Um, and we should have some results from that um, earlier next year. The supplemental, using this team at TTAC to help supplement your research and what you're doing, I think is key. Um, help let them do some of the heavier lifting, but it really helps that you're out there. You see more than we do, um, both at the TTAC, but I mean, an individual can only see so much technology. And I think because TTAC is looking at it, we can help focus them on things that, um, you know, maybe avoid us having to get the latest fad, but we get something that will be very useful in the future. So I think that's how we've seen it used and um, still going strong. So um, if there are no other questions, I don't see any other questions in the question and answer session. Any final thoughts from Doris or uh, 
Jordan. Just thank you for giving us the opportunity to do, to do this virtual showcase with you. You know, we wish we could have done it with you in person, but there's always next year. All right, well, this concludes this session. Thank you all for joining. And again, um, the recording will be available along with the slides on the um, NRTRC site. So thank you again for joining.